Graph transformations. Let's get straight into some example problems and then I'll give a summary of everything you need to know about graph transformations. So this first example here gives us a function f of x equal to 3 to the power x. And part A says point A at 0, 1 translates to B on f of x, take 1. What are the coordinates of B? Now one approach to these types of questions is to plot out 3 to the power x, plot out that graph, draw the graph, and then plot out f of x take 1. So all of the points on that graph and see where that point would end up. But luckily, once you know about graph transformations, you don't have to do all of that. This is the power of graph transformations. It gives us a set of rules or shortcuts that we can quickly apply to different transformations. And then that gives us the new point on the new graph. So here are the rules that I'm talking about. Uh, and I'll go through these in detail in a minute. This is what we're doing to the original function and these are the transformations that occur. So the transformation we care about is f of x take a, this one here. So we have f of x take one and the effect this has is to translate the graph to the right a units in the positive x direction. So if we're going to graph the function f of x take one, the whole graph is going to translate to the right one unit. That means every point on the function three to the power x has now been translated to the right or shifted to the right one unit. So what effect would that have on point A that translates to B? Well, if it's shifting to the right one unit, we look at the X coordinate and we add one to that. So point B then is going to be one, one, okay? And same for every point on that graph. If we looked at the point, say two, nine, that would then shift across to three, nine. So hopefully you can see there, uh, that is why we care about transformations. It gives us a new set of solutions quickly and easily using these set of rules. Let's look at B now. It says f of x is reflected in the y-axis to give a new function g of x. Write down the function g of x in terms of x. So this is kind of the opposite of part A. We are now told the transformation and we need to find the function g of x. And again, we can use our rules for this. Uh, so let's look at these transformations. We have a reflection in the y-axis, that's our first one here. Therefore, the new function will be f of negative x. So if we look at this function, three to the power x, the input is now a negative. That means our new function g of x is going to be three to the power of negative x. You're changing that input to a negative. So g of x then is going to equal three to the power negative x. Again, this is why we care about graph transformations. It allows us to come up with new functions and new solutions on different graphs given a function that we already have. And just to give you a picture of what's going on here, let's have a look at the graph of three to the power x. So here is that exponential function. That's what we call these types of functions, exponential functions. And if we were to transform this into f of x take one, the equation would look like this. And you can see here, we have translated it across one unit. So this point we're talking about at zero one is now at one one. So let's look at the other function we call g of x, that was three to the power of negative x. And you can see that is reflected in the y-axis, okay? So rather than having to plot them out like this, uh, we can use those rules to uh, straight away say what those points would be. Okay, let's go on to example two. This says f of x equals the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now you might not have seen an absolute value function before, but because we're told it's a function, that's what this notation means, that it's a function, we know that the graph transformation rules will apply to this graph as well. So part A says draw the graph of y equals negative f of x. Let's look at our rules. Negative f of x is a reflection in the x-axis. So if we're asked to draw y equals negative f of x, we need to reflect this graph in the x-axis. So pretend you're putting a mirror on the x-axis here. Well, I haven't labeled my axis, but this is the x-axis here, and this is the y-axis. Um, so we need to reflect this graph. And one way you can do this is pick some clear points on the graph. So you could start with the point here. Well, we know that's just going to stay on the x-axis. And I would choose this point here at zero three, if I reflect that in the x-axis, it's going to be three units below the x-axis here at uh, zero, negative three. And this would be the other point I choose. So negative three, three, that would now be at negative three, negative three. So once you've got a couple points, because these are straight lines, that's all we need, two points, we can draw our new graph in. So this would be the reflection of this function in the x-axis. Part B says draw the graph of y equals f of x plus two. Let's check again our rules, what effect this is going to have on the graph. 
So hopefully you can start seeing now there are effectively four different transformations we can have. We can have a reflection in the y-axis, we can have a reflection in the x-axis, a horizontal translation or a vertical translation. This here, if it's x plus or x takes something in the brackets, that's going to be a horizontal translation. If it's a positive number, we're translating the graph to the left in the negative x direction. So those signs there are kind of like opposite of the way that we're shifting the graph. So if we're doing f of x plus two, we're going to translate the graph left two units in the negative x direction. So if we look at this graph then, again, using those points, well, this point down here is going to translate two units to the left to negative three and a half. This point here will translate to negative five, three, and this point here will translate to negative two, three. And again, once we have those points, because they're straight lines, we can draw in our graph, and that will be the graph of f of x plus two. This example demonstrates that even if you're maybe not familiar with the type of function that is being graphed, you can still apply these graph transformation rules. Okay, let's look at a bit of a summary of what we've just been talking about. The types of graph transformations that you need to be familiar with are translations and reflections. The types of graphs you need to be able to apply these to are all of these different types of graphs. So straight line graphs, quadratic graphs, cubic graphs, reciprocal and inverse graphs, exponential graphs, trigonometric graphs, absolute value graphs, and other types of graphs. So again, even if you're not familiar with the type of function that's being graphed, you can still apply these rules. So this is what you need to remember, these different transformations. Again, we're either talking about a reflection or a translation. Y equals F of negative X is a reflection in the Y axis y equals negative f of x is a reflection in the x-axis, y equals f of x take a is a translation to the right, a units, again try to remember that opposites when it's inside the brackets, that's moving in the positive x direction, if it's f of x plus a, it's a translation to the left, a units, in the negative x direction. And then we have y equals f of x plus c. Outside of the brackets, that's a vertical translation, and that's in the direction that you would expect. So if it's a positive C, it's in the positive Y direction. If it's a negative C, it's in the negative Y direction, so down. Okay, so that's a bit of a summary. Let's do a few more examples now, and hopefully you start to get the hang of this. Example three here gives us a function F of X equal to one over X. This is a reciprocal function, and it looks like this. And you might be asked to draw F of negative X. Okay, if you can't remember what f of negative x is, check those rules again, but it is a reflection in the y-axis. So we need to reflect this graph in the y-axis. There are not many clear points on this graph, but there is one here at one, one. So if I reflect that in the y-axis, I know it needs to be one to the left of the y-axis. So it'll be at negative one, one. And hopefully you can see here the connection between uh, what we're doing inside the brackets and the coordinate we're affecting. So this coordinate here, uh, the x coordinate has changed. So we've changed the thing in, inside the brackets, therefore the x coordinate changes. And if it's outside the brackets, you'll see that the y coordinate changes. So that might be something to help you remember. But anyways, let's keep sketching this graph. We've got one point here and it kind of touches this first grid line. So I'm going to use those to help me sketch this out. Uh, so if I start up here, I'll try to do it as neatly as I can and I need to go through negative one, one, and then go down to this grid line up here, and it will look hopefully something like this. Okay, so hopefully you get the idea there, and I also need to do it for this bit down here. Uh, this point here is at negative one, negative one, so the new point would be at one, negative one, reflected to the other side of the y-axis, and again, I'm going to use these grid lines to help me and sketch this in as neatly as I can. Okay, so there we go. That is the graph of f of negative x. Now I need to draw in f of x plus c. Remember this was a translation in the positive y direction, three units. So I'd take this point one, one and go up to one, four. So you can see the y coordinate, I've added three to the y coordinate. And I haven't really given myself enough room there, uh, but hopefully you get, still get the idea. So that asymptote now would be at three rather than uh, zero. Okay, that's pretty terrible. Let me try that again. It's meant to just approach three and not touch three. Okay, let's do this one down here. This is at negative one, negative one. That would translate up to negative one, two. And the asymptote now is at three. And I need to go down here and approach the y-axis but never actually touch it. Okay. 
So that would keep going down. All right, so that's a pretty terrible graph. Hopefully yours would look neater than that, but hopefully you get the idea. Let's actually have a look at a neater version of this and let's explore what the equations of these functions would look like. Okay, so let's have a look at the reciprocal graph. You need to know what these look like and how to transform them. So this is one on X. And then if we were to plot F of negative X, that input then would be negative. So it would, the equation would look like this. And you can see here, we get the reflection in the Y axis. Interestingly, it would be the same if we reflected it in the X axis. Maybe that's something you can uh, explore yourself. And then let's look at one on X plus three. That was F of X plus three. And you can see here that it is uh, translated up three units. Okay. So that's a bit of a neater diagram than my drawing. Okay. Let's go back to the last example. Uh, this is hopefully something a little bit different to what you might have seen before. This question says the graph of y equals f of x is transformed to give the graph of y equals negative f of x take 4. The point p on the graph of y equals f of x is transformed to the point q on the graph of y equals negative x take 4. p has coordinates 3, 1. Write down the coordinates of q. So the difference here is we're actually doing two transformations in this one. We've got negative f of x and f of x take 4 all in that one transformation. So let's write down what the transformations uh, we're using here. So if you need to go back and check the rules, but negative f of x, that was a reflection in the x axis and f of x take four, that was a translation to the right four units. And you can use a translation vector to write this down. You need to know what these are and how to use them and how to read them. So a translation vector uh, gives you the negative or positive x direction and the negative or positive y direction. So this would look like four zero. That means we're shifting the graph four units to the right. So we need to apply these two transformations to this graph and think about what the effect that would have on the coordinates. So if I reflect it in the x axis, well, let's use this grid up here to have a look at this, uh, ignore those graphs and let's just concentrate on this coordinate three one. So that would be here. If I reflect that in the X axis, that would be at three negative one. And then I need to translate it four units to the right. So if I went one, two, three, four, I've run out of graph, but you can do three plus four, that would be at seven. So my new point then would be at seven negative one. So you can see we don't even need the graph to be able to find the points on this new graph. Again, that is why we care about graph transformations. So we can write down then Q is equal to seven negative one. Okay, so there are a few examples of different types of questions you might be asked in terms of graph transformations. Let's have a look at trigonometric graphs now. Well, firstly, the three graphs you need to know are the sine, cosine and tan graphs. So y equals sine of x, y equals cosine of x, and y equals tan of x. You need to know what these look like, you need to know how to plot them, and you need to know how to transform them. Um, so the transformations are generally written in that form that I mentioned earlier. Let's go ahead and write that down again. So they're generally written in this form, y equals uh, sine of x take k plus c, where they are constants. k will be in degrees. So usually 90 degrees or 180 degrees, something like that. Um, and this could be cosine or tan as well. So for example, you might be given the graph of y equals sine x and be asked to plot or show what y equals negative sine x looks like. Now this is the same as y equals negative f of x. Remember what that did? That was a reflection in the x axis. So y equals negative sine x is a reflection in the x axis of y equals sine x. You might be asked to plot y equals cosine of negative x. Remember what that was? This is the same as y equals f of negative x. Remember that was a reflection in the y axis. So this graph, y equals cosine of negative x, would be a reflection of y equals cosine of x. So how do you think those two graphs would look? Well, we'll have a look in a minute, but hopefully you're thinking, would this really be a transformation? Okay, also we could have y equal to negative 10 of x, uh, x plus 90. Um, so this would be like y equals negative f of x plus 90. Because we've got negative f of x, that's a reflection in the x axis and 
we are translating to the left 90 degrees because remember when that's a positive we go to the left or negative x direction okay so let's have a look at what these graphs look like and then how the transformations might look firstly the sine function or the sine wave as it's sometimes called because obviously it is a wave uh, it starts at zero goes up to one and down to negative one they are the min and max of the sine function um, it crosses the graph again at 180 and if you keep going across you get to 360 okay so it cuts the graph at 0 180 360 goes up to 1 down to negative 1 and as we were just saying if you wanted to plot negative sine of x that would be like a reflection so you get kind of the opposite so you'd start at 0 but go down to negative 1 and up to positive 1 and you get something like this Okay. You also need to know how to shift it horizontally as well. Let's look at the cosine function. Uh, so the cosine function starts at 1, 0, 1, and goes down to 90 and up to 270. If we look at that along with the sine wave or sine function, you notice it's kind of like a horizontal translation. So it is shifted to the left 90 degrees or to the right either way. But you can say that it's a transformation of the sine function. Um, and then if we were to plot cosine of negative x, remember reflection the y-axis, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, it's essentially the same, right? Because it's symmetrical about the y-axis. If we were to plot something like cosine of x plus 45, uh, and then we did the uh, reflection of that, we'd get something slightly different. Uh, but in this case, when it's just cosine of x, the reflection is the same. Okay, then look, let's look at the tan of x. That's a bit different to the other ones. Uh, they have asymptotes at 90 and negative 90, so it's not crossing those values on the x-axis. Um, we might want to zoom in a bit or even out a bit here. Okay, and you also need to know what this function looks like and how to translate it. So the example we were looking at was negative tan of x plus 90. Uh, that is a reflection and a translation. So let's have a look. So it's reflected in the x-axis and translated uh, to the left 90 degrees. So you can see this point at 0, 0 is now at negative 90 and it's reflected. Okay, so hopefully that is a, a quick useful summary of transformations of the trig graphs and the other types of graphs you need to know about. So there you go, that's everything you need to know in terms of graph transformations for GCC mathematics. As long as you can remember these four rules, then you'll be fine. Remember, we apply them the same to any type of graph that you might be given. I'll leave some questions you can have a go at in the description, so check that out if you want some extra practice after this video. If you appreciated this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. A final note, you may have noticed at the start of this video that I transformed my voice. A sound wave can be thought of as a function and a graph. You can create different effects by, by transforming the sound wave function. This is one example of the applications of graph transformations. What effect do you think reflecting the sound wave would have?